Good afternoon, Pranga. Welcome to the Love Swim Workshop on St. David's Day. Hope you're all well. Um, what we're going to do today, we're going to demonstrate some wood carving. Hopefully we've got sound, we've got uh, visual and everything's working fine. So yeah, what we're going to do is to demonstrate some uh, wood carving. As you can see from the shape on the wall there, it's a nice sunny day here in West Wales. Got the daffodils out. So yeah, we're going to have a little look at doing some carving. So I'm just going to refocus that camera. I'm going to take our daffodils down so they don't fall over. Smelling good. There we are. So yeah, we move those across and we focus in and get the camera recording us doing some hand carving. Now we're going to show you an idea today. Uh, you can see the spoon on the bench there. We've got a daffodil love spoon that we're going to be carving. Slightly different to what you might have seen us doing before because that love spoon, well, there's going to be a little bit of a twist to it. So you'll have to stay tuned to find out what the twist is. We're not going to give it away straight away. Although some of you, if you're eagle-eyed, may notice it. Just going to refocus the camera. Two seconds. I just, let's just move that focus across. There we are. That's better. There, just like so. So we've got that nice and sharp. And hopefully, I'll just double check it for you all. Excuse me one moment. There, that should be nice and sharp so you'll all be able to see the hand carving. Yeah, on face value, we're carving a piece of oak. But you'll see now that there's a little bit more to it. I'm going to check as well that we've got sand. Excuse me one moment. Yeah, we got sand as well. Right, let's have a little look. This is the love spoon that we're working on. I'll just check with on manual focus. Yes, we are. So, same as normal, we're going to start off with doing our stop cuts. So we cut down into the wood and we, with a daffodil, I usually start off working on the trumpet. You'll have seen us last week, we were demonstrating a daffodil, but slightly different because it was a relief carving. This one, we're using our more common technique now, where we use a combination of the scroll saw and the hand carving. Just started, there's a gouge missing. That's my important one. Do you know where that's gone? Yeah, it's over there. It's pinched one of my gouges. Yeah, Thomas the Woodcarver is with us. Do you want to say hello to everyone, Thomas Woodcarver? I get the chisel first. There we are, he's off to find my, my chisel and complain before I start. So all I'm doing is I'm just doing our stop cuts just to bring out the shape of our design. I really need that other gouge. But there we are, such is life. Um, we've got, got that one, brilliant. There we are, so we're just bringing out those shapes, doing the stop cuts. So we've got this trumpet at the front, the leaves just behind, and some grass just surrounding it. So that's the idea about it. Okay. Yeah, we've got Thomas the Woodcarver with us. Thomas the Woodcarver. Any thoughts? Are well, you going to share some thoughts I with think, us? Yes, I think it's important to emphasise the fact that it's St. David's Day today. Yeah, absolutely. The Saint of Wales. Yeah. And for anybody that, um, you know, maybe sort of listening from... Well, we have people parts. joining us from, from... I know we have people joining us from the US. It's always great. It's from the USA. Well, it's, you Across know, it's, the pond, as people say. It's quite a it's quite a big day in Wales, isn't it? In fairness, it's, yeah, it um, is. We, Still not a national holiday, but you'd it, think. You'd... Well, when I was in school, there a long, long time ago. Was it a national holiday? Well, mm. what we would do, you you'd have like a nice Stedford. Yeah. Um, because. Want to I, explain the nice Stedford for I, anyone I, who doesn't I'm, know? I'm I was brought up nearer the valleys, just outside between Cardiff and Pontypridd. So, in that area. In junior school, <clears throat> we would have a celebration in the morning yeah. of possibly singing and poetry reading or whatever, and then you'd have the afternoon off. So it was so, half day. So you have the half day. Um, so it would depend where you know. Look at that. How, and all that 
how times have changed because because now the children have had what nearly four months off and they just sent them back to school on St David's Day. Yeah, so so. Hey, the, hey, the, but, it, but in fairness, in this area, it is known. It's Pembrokeshire, and it's known as um, Little England beyond Wales. So, I don't know. I, I, I hadn't, it, it's only just registered me with that that the Welsh Assembly have sent all the children back to school on St David's Day. Yeah, I know. They could have chosen any day to. Yeah, have but done they it won't on. be allowed to wear any costume or anything like that. No, no leak. No, the, no uh, daffodil because of coronavirus. So yeah, they are. So, so yeah. Quite hmm. sort of, um, That's an interesting one to think yeah. of. Of all the days they could have sent yeah. the children back, they sent them back on. Yeah. There we are. Right, so you may notice, um, hopefully it's coming through on the camera, you may notice that there's something a little bit different about our mahogany. That's because it's not just a piece of mahogany. So this one, we're going to be using this. There's going to be a, a few different things we're going to do with this one. It's actually a combination of woods. It's mahogany on the top and it's oak on the bottom. So an original idea, we got a number of videos coming up using this concept. Basically what it is, we've stuck together two pieces of wood to create something a little bit different. We've created, yeah, it's just a different concept, but it's a good example for how we constantly try different things. That's right. I'm gonna constantly evolve yeah, things. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna go on. <clears throat> I've just uh, got the fire going on. Are you, are you going to leave us with any uh, pearls of wisdom? Any? Oh, well, I'm going to come back and tell you a little bit more about St David's Day. But um, have you got have you got a, have you got a St David's Day story to share with everybody? Or oh yeah, yeah, I I have yes, yeah. But uh, as I say, I have got a few logs to uh, split, and so I've got a bit of work to do outside. Now this is an interesting one. I let you I let you carry on, and I'll explain to everyone why, whilst we're doing this. Um, yeah, seasoning. See, we see a lot of um, a lot of things on social media. I mentioned it last week. We joined a few different groups, and there's a lot said about seasoning, and a lot of questions that people ask about seasoning. How uh, how long to season for? Just to give you an idea, we've done a video on this one, but to give you our method of seasoning, uh, this is we're sort of getting to the end of the time when it's suitable for cutting logs down because they're going to start. Excuse me, they're going to start getting more, um, you know, the trees are going to get more active. So we're getting to the end of the, the time, the sort of season then we call it for cutting logs and trees down. Uh, but if we're drying naturally, what we do for every inch across the diameter, we dry out for a 12 month. So we dry out our logs for um, a year for every inch across the diameter. But we work in a two year cycle because most of our wood is less than an inch thick. So to give you an example there, that's a typical love spoon, that sort of thickness. So what we do after a year, we uh, basically cut it less than an inch thick, put, little, put it on little slats, so little slats of wood, little bits of wood, dry it out for another 12 months, and then it's ready to go. So we work in, in a two year cycle. Just have a comment on there that we'll have a quick check. Hello, Tony. Great to have you with us, as always. Glad you can join us. As happy St. David's Day here in Wales. It's our our patron saint here in Wales. So we're a bit of a bit of a special day for us. And that's why we're carving then our our daffodil design. This one we do on uh, we do this in our online shop. We call it, we refer to it as our Primavera Spoon, which where it gets a bit contradictory because that's Spanish, but uh, it's for springtime because we always sort of think, always think of the daffodils. When the daffodils start coming out, that's when we're really getting into springtime. So for any of you who are interested in learning wood carving, if you're developing your, your wood carving skills, things that we note then with this, as I said, we've stuck together You'll see it on the side there. We stuck together that oak and that mahogany. Um, we've marked it out though. Both of those have got a vertical grain. So that makes it slightly easier when it comes to the hand carving. As I always say, mark out with a vertical grain for, for doing your hand carving. Uh, you can then, uh, in terms of getting the design on there, we use carbon paper. So you can transfer the design onto the wood using carbon paper. You can leave the lines on if you want to. So I'm going to be demonstrating a Celtic design that we do that's quite popular as well. And with that one there, I'll leave the, 
the, the lines on so we've got them to follow. But general rule, mark it out with a vertical grain and it does usually make life easier for us. We're trying to work with the grain as much as possible. When we're doing some of these petals, you're, you are going sort of across the grain slightly. You can get away with it a bit if you've got a good sharp gouge to do the job. Another thing then we've noticed a lot of uh, questions about are tools. Um, and I'm interested to know, and any feedback from anyone, this is more in the, the UK now, a number of people were asking, saying about how they can't get gouges and things like that in, in the UK. And I was quite surprised at this. But what it was, they were talking about things like flex cuts um, and, and different companies like this. I, I be honest with you, gouges and tools that I've never even looked at. Um, but we were surprised at it because there are companies like Henry Taylor, uh, Ashley Isles, and uh, the other one, Sorby. Yeah, Sorby, who produced really nice gouges. That one there, that's a, a nice Sorby gouge. And that's a, an older Sorby gouge. But anyway, they make really good tools. And I was surprised that people don't realise that they're actually making those here in, in the UK. So anyone looking for tools, and again, we've we got no association with any of those those particular companies, but anyone looking for tools, well worth noting that they do actually make them here in the UK. So if you're in, in the market for new tools, new gouges, check those check those companies out. Because they, they do make really good really good kits. So what I'm trying to do with this particular one then is to take away the top layer and then that brings out that bottom layer. So we're trying to get contrast, get the two colours into into the design itself. So just working around the outside. And the reason we, we sort of do this, we you may notice with our spoons, we use a lot of sort of frame framing, that sort of thing, cutting around the outside. And it is literally to do that, it's to frame our carving, but it also, it gives strength. So if you're learning wood carving, if you're new to wood carving, if you can get strength into your work, strength into your design, it helps out. This is a little bit of a, a, a new twist then that we're doing. We always look to do something different and original that nobody else has sort of done before. So that's why we thought we would do this, is to, to actually use two contrasting uh, coloured pieces of wood. Just adds a, a, another little dimension to, to the work that we're doing. The trick with it then is to try and get your top layer actually a little bit thinner. So that means then that you haven't got too much too, I haven't got too much carving to do to reveal the bottom layer. Now you may be able to hear in the background, Dad's just started on the circular saw. So again, that's back to processing the wood. He's getting some more wood ready for us. So we're constantly, we're sort of in a constant process. It's a two year cycle we're always working in when it comes to seasoning the wood, but it's a constant process of um, processing the wood, preparing it, marking out, cutting, and then hand carving. There we go. So be interested to know, is anyone doing anything today for St. David's Day? We've been, we've been doing a few things here. We've, um, we've, we've done some Welsh cakes. We're having some cowl later. Wonder if any of you are familiar with cowl? Just gonna have a little check there. There's somebody just put a comment on. Two seconds. We've got Ed Thomas. Thank you for the reminder that it's St. David's Day. Ah, brilliant. Yeah, great. Some some memories of uh, the Welsh male voice choirs and celebrating St. David's Day. I think it's celebrated as much in, in, in the US as, as, as anywhere else. It's it's great to know that there's there's a lot of interest in in St David's Day and in Wales and different things then that that are going on through, throughout then throughout the US. It's fantastic. Great to hear you've joined us as well. Nice to have you all here. So you can see we're just bringing out our shape there. 
We've got the trumpet in two colours. I'm hoping as well. We're just, um, yeah, we should be able. I can also, can I? Hope, hope you can all see it clearly, what I'm carving. If not, let me know and I can move it. I can adjust it again and perhaps you'll be able to see it better. But let me know if it's okay. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna bevel those petals. Put a little bit of detail. So like the inside of the trumpet. Now this I'm gonna have to go quite carefully on because we don't wanna go and split those two layers apart. Because that's the one thing when you're doing this, if you do have a go at doing this, you've got to be careful because you've stuck two different woods together. Just got to be careful that you don't go and pull them apart again by accident. Shouldn't do. They should be stuck together well. But you've always just got to be a little bit careful. So that's just marking out the trumpets. And then we also do a little bit of detail on each of the petals. So we've got one, two, three, and four. Just a little bit of extra detail. And that's most of the carving done on the daffodil itself. We then work on our surrounds. We've got our hearts to work on also. And what we'll do is we'll try and bring a little bit more of the wood, that wood colour at the back, try and bring a little bit more of the oak through. Doing things like this as well, we do different things. It's sort of, it's adding a, a different dimension in terms of doing something different that just hasn't been done with the, the love spoon before. But it also, it keeps it interesting for ourselves doing something original. Uh, because it's just nice because we're you know we're working we're working with wood a lot of uh, a lot of the time and to just add something that you haven't done before it's just fun so you can just see just bringing out a little bit of that oak just to just to add another another element to it Here we are. You might be able to hear there's my son enjoying my son enjoying the sun outside with Gramps, with his Gramps. And they're working there cutting up the logs. So it's a nice sunny day here. After a month in February where we've had more than our fair share of rain. But that's not that unusual for us here in Wales. Now then, we're going to go on to work on these hearts. So for this, you can use the mallet just to get a little bit of extra extra purchase on what you're doing. A couple of taps on there for the bottom of the hearts. Move it across and you're working on the heart that's just alongside it. Just like so. So we've got our stop cuts and then we use that just to give it a little bit of extra depth. We're gonna do a little twist on the stem. The hope as well with this love spoon if we don't go and mess it up, we'll probably end up putting this on our website. We have a, a section on there we refer to as Collector's Corner, where we do love spoons that are a little bit different to what we normally do. And this one then, absolutely perfect for that. Just notice we've got another comment on there. Get them into us. Uh, foggy here in West Yorkshire. Oh dear. It's normally... Uh, it's normally ourselves down here in West Wales that are getting the bad weather, but we, we've actually got a, a decent day today. But we've been, we probably had about a month. We probably had about 10 months of rain in a month, didn't we? Yeah, I think so. It was, uh, it's been pretty wet, so it's a, it's a bit of relief for us to see a little bit of, uh, a little bit of sunshine for a change. And it's, uh, it's a little bit cool, but nice to see the sun. The daffodils, whilst they're coming out, a lot of them that have come out so far are sort of half on their side, unfortunately, because they've been battered by the wind. That's the one thing we've noticed, is that it's been extremely windy. There we are. Now what I've done, you probably can't quite see it on the camera because of the angle, but I've just brought out that oak just below the hearts. So we're going to do that twist on the stem. 
And this is what we sort of, uh, you know, what I enjoy then is, is doing something original and playing about and trying to think, what if we did this? Have you explained now what you're doing there? We're explaining how we've got the two contrasting pieces of wood. We've explained that, yeah. Did you, you want to explain that. anything further? Eh? Do you want to explain a bit about the process of how we've gone about doing that? Well, the difficult bit, of course. Difficult part of doing this then, for anybody who wants to have a go at getting two pieces of wood of this, and don't worry, we've, we've got some videos coming up where we, we do talk um, about, you know, about it, but the... The difficult part of the process, you've got to get the two pieces of wood flat, haven't you? Yeah, and I had to do that. Well, it's the first time you've done it. I know, but I had to do the difficult bit, didn't I? Oh, right. But I've done it. I, 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 I showed you how to do it first, see? I know, but I had to make these two pieces of wood flat, didn't I? Yeah, but I did the other ones before. <laughs> it's, it's, it's high controversy here. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Um, yeah, it, it, it was an idea, because I've done three of these before, so. Yeah. <laughs> but they, they were only little ones. Oh, they're only little ones. Yeah. There this, we go. This is, this is a proper job. Oh, here we go. It's, it's, there we are. High controversy here. Right. What are, you, what, are you, well, what are you demonstrating? Basically, the main thing we've got to get across, instead of us, instead of us winding each other up, um, what we're going to do is explain what we've actually done. We've stuck the two pieces of wood together, so what you've got to do is to get them flat. Um, interestingly, you will just see a little bit of the remnants of the glue there. The reason for that, that as Dad said, the difficulty is getting the two pieces of wood flat enough to stick together, and there was a little gap there. So we just put a bit of extra glue on there just to be safe, because you don't want to go and work on something, make it, and then afterwards you've, you've got a problem. So. Yes. It's, it's something actually, you, important thing with gluing two pieces of wood together, you've got to get them perfectly flat. Flat on the back. But also, they want to be the right moisture content as well. They need to be down, you know, we like our timber down. Well seasoned. Uh, well seasoned, round about anything between 12, 13, 14% yeah. moisture content. Because obviously, it, you know, if you, if you, if you use wet, uh, you use timber that's not seasoned, um, it's going to cause you problems. You, you've got two different types of wood that are sort of dry out differently. I think I jumped in there a bit quick, innit? It's not that it's going to cause you problems. Potentially, it's basically, it has the potential to cause yeah. problems. Yeah. And, and the reason as well, we use the seasoned wood because we, we're running a family workshop. And, you know, we, we don't want the phone going... 24 7 with when we sold people love spoons and they're saying oh i've looked at my love spoon and there's a big split down it what's yeah, happening yeah. can still happen because you'd be amazed how people will keep things you know you, you'll make stuff and they'll keep it like near central heating ducts they'll keep it Another point near radiators do you, do you remember you you purchased some uh, super glue oh yeah that's an interesting one um for doing this job um I, 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 I looked on, I actually, what it is, we, we do it, because we're doing it quickly, we've used super glue to stick them together. This one's actually been done with wood glue, but I, because I was playing around with it the one day, I wanted to do the job quickly. And I thought, yeah, I like this idea, I think it'll be a nice concept, and I think it'll be popular. So I, I went on eBay and I bought some cheap super glue. Um, all I can say, the positives, with, I mean, the positives with it would have been, there were a lot, there were a lot of fumes. I think that's not a positive, it's a negative, isn't it? Yeah. But there was, there was a lot of fumes, but the, 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 the super glue itself, it, it wasn't holding. No. I, it, I was in a right mess with it because it wasn't actually holding. So, so you have to be careful. You've got to be careful with what glue you purchase. And when I looked at the bottle, it had something to say about laminates, sticking laminates and um, MDF. I thought, well, that should work on wood, but we live and we learn. I'm afraid that super glue wasn't very good for what it would be able to do. Did you read the comment about the coir? Yeah, in Wisconsin. Yeah, brilliant. See, our nearest male voice choir here, and it must have been, I mean, it must we're be a difficult far. time. We, 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 we got, we're we got, right in the centre of three. We're in the middle of the moor. We got Pembroke, Tenby, yeah, and right. Whitland, yeah. and Haverford West. 
Yeah. And what they sometimes do, the male voice choirs around here, they sometimes all join together and do a concert together, don't they? Yeah, we're fortunate in, in Tenby, especially. You can they, just walk actually, in for free. When they practice on a, a Thursday night, isn't Tuesdays it? Tuesdays and the Thursdays, they Did, actually sing outside. Yeah. In, you know, near the harbour. That's right. In the, if it's a nice day in the summer, they. Yeah. We're, we're, we're reminiscing now because all of this, see, there was none of that last year. Because, um, of course, with all different rules and regs right, and restrictions. Allowed to sing. In, in, in not, allowed to, not allowed to sing. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. not they're not quite taxed in the air yet, but they will come back. They will come back. They 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 probably got somewhere tax in the air, have they? Or I'm sure they'll find somewhere. They they'll have a they'll have a think that's on that. That's Wednesday. That's a, that's our budget day, Wednesday. I'll bet we'll find out on Wednesday, is it? They're doing a new budget. Yeah. This there is we the are. Back. There we go. So you can see, as we're going along, we're just getting that contrasting colour coming through. And yeah, it just adds an extra dimension to our work. I don't know as well, I'll ask that a question. Have you got some shellac there? Shellac, yeah, I've got the shellac. I'm just checking on the... No problem. My son is, is out the back there enjoying the sun, so he's going to check on him. Got another, another comment there or something like that? Super loose a bit brittle. It's okay for small drum. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's right. And over time as well, the super glue does, it can go a bit, uh, a bit funny. And that's why, as I said, on these ones now we use we've used our wood glue. It takes a bit longer, but it was when we we're playing about with it, it's sort of experimenting. I wasn't sure if it was something as a concept that was going to work, but thankfully, yeah, it has. And we, as I said, we got some videos coming up where we'll um, where we'll show some of the things that we've actually made using this using this technique. But it's great, because it's good fun to, to just do something a bit different. Shellac. Brilliant, we've got some shellac there ready to go. Yeah. I, I This one is one that I, so far I've been, I find it quite impressive when we have put the shellac on to see those colors coming through. I also find as well that it's easier, or slightly easier to put the mahogany as the top layer, because what I do, I thin that top layer down on the belt sander and I just find it's a little bit easier to thin the mahogany than to thin the oak. But of course, depends on the oak, depends on the mahogany. Here we are. So, we just see bottom layer coming through. I just want a little bit more, more of the oak coming through. I think I'm going to go a little bit deeper on that stock cut because I want a little bit more oak. Just coming through. I think I'm going to go deeper on both. Actually, we want a bit more oak coming through on that twist. This is an idea for people here as well. When yeah. You, you know what it's like. You find like I got a I got a block of oak there, which I'm going to push in front of the camera. Yeah. And annoy you. Okay. That's fine. You can see now. The yeah. drop it down so the camera. There goes we are. And the, focus the thickness better. I'm looking at as well. See on the side yeah. there. You know, often can't see it. Like it? a love spoon will be our love spoons are anything between half inch and five eighths. And so often you get pieces of wood, we, we cut them to a certain size, um, but you can't always get two um, thicknesses. So it's basically you end up with an off cut. Yeah, so you end up with a, I mean, I've got a piece out here now of older. If you're wondering, he's just gone to get the older. He'll be back two seconds. Yeah. He's searching around for it now. I'll carry on carving whilst he's explaining. You know, we use, as much as we can, we use our own timber. But when we have to go to the timber store, you're governed then by the people that have cut it before. That's right. So this particular piece of older, I don't know how you want to show it, Dave. There it is. It was one piece. Ooh. Like so. There you go. So that's, that's the that. Order. And you can see. It's and you can see. You know, we got, we've got a, a bit of an off cut. Uh, that's thick enough for spoons, but the off cut is obviously not quite thick enough for spoons. We make paper knives from it, or we make something else from it. But doing what you're doing enables us to use those off cuts. It's, it's, right, it's right up our street, really, because it's... It's wood that we would probably end up throwing away. So this is what we're, we're always looking to recycle, reuse, 
how can we reuse something? How can we recycle something? So it's another way that as opposed to having thinner pieces of wood that we can't use, stick them together. You, you use the wrong word then. We throw it away. That's we don't not, throw it away. That's not true. We, we use it for another job. We hardly ever throw anything away. It, you know, we, we use, we I don't use think we, it I don't think we've ever. I don't think we've ever thrown a piece of wood away. I don't know That's what I'm talking right. about. Yeah, um, yeah it, it's, it's basically that would, would get used for well, what happens. We use it, what I actually mean, we use it for packaging. We use it for boxes yeah. that we send the love spoons in. That's what we'd use it. But sometimes it's good quality wood like this is. And it's a shame then that it doesn't sort of get a new lease of life. And it, it, you know, whilst it's still being used as a box, it, what I mean is we should be making something, something more from creative it, yeah. from it. It's such a yeah. wonderful material, and you know, we, we we do our best to give it as much respect as we possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's 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 a resource that um, it's we precious, really isn't need it? To look after, yeah. So and those that's... thinner bits, you know, you can use again, like. Yeah, I mean, maybe, that's the thing, maybe it can get, you know, others, yourselves, looking at different different pieces of wood and just seeing it a little bit differently and thinking, well, maybe somebody will have a similar idea and think, well, if I use those two woods together, yeah. I can get I'm something out of those, I, isn't I can it? remember going back to school, let me think, no, that's, uh, yeah, 70 core, yeah, 50. 56 years ago, okay, I, I can remember um, we used to recycle wood even then in school because obviously it was an expensive resource and we used to do, um, we had the opportunity in secondary school to use a lathe. So we would sometimes glue pieces of wood together and we would make perhaps a, a fruit dish from it. Turning uh, them. Yeah, we would turn them, and, and you'd you'd glue these pieces of wood together to, to give uh, well, I think, a nice I th effect. I think we, we've given their dues there, really, isn't it? I think wood turners have been doing this for donkey's yeah. years, haven't they? Yeah. And so it's it's just something that I think we can bring from wood turning. Then I think we can use that as as wood carvers. Then I think you know it's always being open to learning new ideas and, and new things and doing things differently. Yeah. This came about because um, we mentioned it a few weeks ago. Our neighbour across the road was having some work done and they were pulling up the pulling up the oak flooring. Yeah. The problem was though the oak flooring, I think do you wanna get a smaller piece so we can show everyone? The problem with the oak flooring was that there was a, a recess had been cut in the back. They're, they're, it had been pinned together with sort of metal straps. And because there was this, these straps had been included, there's like a recess in the wood which made it too thin for us to be able to well, make... It's a good example if you love show strong. It yeah, there you go. It's got the pin straps, got everything on there. See? So because they got these recesses for these pins to pull it all together, the flooring, it's the oak floor in there. It's oak floor and it's got water damage. Um, it, it basically, these recesses, they don't go right the way through. They only go part of the way through, but it makes it too thin for us to make a conventional love spoon from. So that is when it, it sort of, it was presented to, to myself to, you know, to, to sort of think of an idea. Just, just to show that it's, you see, yeah, we so. can make Certain spoons. Yes, yeah, certain spoons are narrow enough to do it, but okay. we would be quite limited in terms of yeah. our own range if we were sticking to just making spoons of that thickness. So what I'm trying to do now, that's the one thing I noticed is certainly taking a little bit longer than normal to carve this spoon, but it's because I'm taking out a little bit extra wood that I wouldn't normally wouldn't normally do. It's all part of the process. So we're going to bring that down. I'd like to go a little bit deeper on there just to get, we're getting quite close to bringing that oak through, but we haven't quite got there yet. Also then we're going to have this bit at the top. This as well, bit at the top, practical things we're always thinking of. I think we got, from the colour of the symbol there, I reckon that's Midnight Joker. Oh, someone here. Midnight Joker. Yeah, how are you doing? 
I can tell from, I didn't have to move, I can see from the, from the, uh, the colour of the symbol. I thought I recognised that one. Great to have you with us. Is that that Happy St. David's Day. It's okay for small jobs, yeah. but you can just split the farm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, most of what we do is it's it is it's it's smaller scale stuff. And we use we use a few different glues. But you see, again, <laughs> there's so many things you can say about this particular the way you're doing this and what you are um, you know you're making it. Yeah. You you can say um, we, we add another dimension to it because right. um, we've chosen, you know, this is now, I, I'm speaking now with tongue in cheek, okay? <laughs> so we've chosen it like this because, of course, a love spoon very often is for two people. Yeah. So we've we now got... We've got the contrast. We're representing now those two people yeah. coming together. Yeah. On, on on that piece of wood. So you can see how the love spoon you can use. <laughs> tell stories, tell stories messages. Yeah. Absolutely. And sort of um, you know, you you can Well already see because because it's my my marketing brain starts exactly. kicking in. And my marketing brain, see this we put some of these up on the website already. And um I, I'm call, calling them for instance we've done a cutch spoon. So it's the cutch contrast, see? So you yeah, get yeah. you you're thinking because that's what it's all about is contrast because we've always got contrast in our work because we use the scroll saw a lot so you get the contrast between the pierce cuts so these holes in between and the, and the wood carving and watch this space because today Dave is doing this so we we've started doing this ah yeah yeah we're waiting now because tomorrow we yeah watch keep an eye out now because you'll see this there's a good chance you'll see this now starting to appear because yeah. we've we've noticed we've noticed with the the spoons and things like that we have a little idea, and then the next thing we notice in certain quarters these the the, the same idea will appear. Yeah. So keep your eyes keep your eyes out keep watching Love Spoon Designs because this will, probably won't be the last time you've seen this style. Yeah. But remember you saw it year first because what we do we we're always sort of thinking of something different. Keep keep it interesting for ourselves and to keep freshening things up. So once once we've done this, we'll continue doing it, but we'll start thinking of something else to do. Well, it's great, you know. If 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 other people, you know, want to continue making this style of spoon, it's great because you're recycling. The, your, word, the word you, you, you're yeah, looking at. If other people want to copy. I yeah, think, I, I think know. That's but the word uh, I'm being polite, Dave. There we are. Sorry, I I'm, I'm not as I wasn't being polite. Apologies for that. But uh, yeah, don't. Remember where you saw it first. <laughs> right, so you can see we're just bringing that contrasting colour out. So we're just going round the outside like so, framing to, everything as we go. Do you want me to cut that one up as well? For your... We leave it for, for after. He says what it is, we, we marked out, good example for you to see, we marked out this love spoon from the same piece of wood at the same time, or the same two pieces of wood, and yeah, so you can see you've got those two colours. And the reason we did that was the wood was slightly wider than the one spoon. So we don't like wasting stuff. As we were saying, we like preserving it. So we marked out a second love spoon. I thought the plan was at some stage you were coming in to... Oh, that'd be nice. There you go. We're adding a bit of colour to things. Well, no, it's St. David's Day, isn't it? Absolutely. For anybody that's joining us now, St. David's Absolutely. Day, we, we had a lovely uh, vase full of daffodils, which we'll show you later on. And of course... Um, but it looks pretty on the camera, is the thing, see? For anybody that doesn't realise, March the 1st is St. David's Day. Are you going to regale us with your St. David's yeah, Day we song? Yeah, well, it's just that what we used to do as, as children in school. Right. Um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, you'd have like a nice death food in the morning. Your, your class would either sing or uh, recite the poem. And um, this would be in the junior school. And an early finish, you said. And you'd finish at 12 o'clock then and have the afternoon off. But what, what would you we, do with the afternoon? Well, what we would do before we went home... Because what it is, kids have an afternoon off. That's what you're going to remember more than anything, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. The, the girls generally wore the daffodil and the boys used to wear a leek. But of course... Uh, and again, it's still the same today that, you know, there are, there are competitions about who's got the largest leek. <laughs> That's typical boys. Yeah. Um, and so, um, 
At, at the end of the ice step, you, you'd you be, you know, some of the boys would come wearing a, quite a large leak. Well, I assume it was the boys. It wasn't the girls asking who's got the largest leak. Was oh, that's, good. <laughs> that's gone. Yeah. So um, shouldn't assume. You know, they they challenge one another then to actually eat the leak. So um, did you have a champion leak eater? Yeah, you would. <laughs> it's, it was a long time ago now. Dave, I'm talking. As I said, about fifty. How many years? I say sixty-five. No. Yeah, about. 55 years ago, so uh, maybe more. Um, so was the highlight health, of Health and safety wouldn't allow you now to eat the leak in school like that. No. Mind you, it, was done, it, was, it wasn't It was done in front of the teachers. It was It was done, we were fortunate enough, to, of course, to have a rugby field. Yeah. And um, another thing that, uh, another bit of a challenge was that uh, the, the boys would have to climb the um, rugby posts and um, stick the leak then on the... On the crossbar, so that was a kind of nonsense that, was that you got up to. St David's Day yeah. celebrations. Yeah, that was junior school. That was, but, uh, but it was it was good fun. See, I'd be honest. When I w I was in school, I don't remember us doing a lot on St yeah, David's Day. Because I was from Glamorgan. It was at the time. Right. I was from Glamorgan, but it it was more. You know, St. David's Day and that kind of thing was celebrating more up there than it was down here in Pembrokeshire. Because, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Pembrokeshire was known as Little England beyond Wales. But isn't it funny? Because St. David's is in Pembrokeshire. There we are. Interesting to... And also, um, Mum, who went to school in Pembrokeshire, um, learnt the Welsh National Anthem in English. That's right. Well, we were taught it in English yeah, as well. Yeah, but... Because, uh, of course, near, the Welsh National Anthem is, is in Welsh. Being Tuswell, near um, uh, Pontefriel and Cardiff, <coughs> we learnt the National Anthem in Welsh. And so, you know, that was quite a, a different sort of... Because um, this area is um, is a peculiar... It's a peculiar little area where it's, it's, it's got words of its own. That's right. Because the Pembrokeshire farmers, um, anyone got any link to, to Newcastle, they say, um, why I man? Yeah. But in Pembrokeshire, they say, why a bay? Yeah. So it's, it's a... And I think there's a Cornish link as well. Yeah. No, Cornwall is just across the water. That's right. So well, of course, years ago, there were more, more travel by sea, wasn't it? Yeah. So, so this. So St. David's Day. And of course, the important thing, um, which I'll, I'll bring them in now for people to see. Oh, I, I, I know what he's bringing in, and if, if they all, if what he's bringing in, if all of them manage to make it into the workshop, I, I'll be surprised. So, so he's, he's on his way to share another, another little bit of Welsh, Welsh culture for, for celebrating St David's Day. But if they all arrive in the workshop, it'll be, it'll be a bit of a surprise to me. It'll be a first. So you can just see we're bringing out that colour of the oak. That's just coming through. I'm just going to finish around the top and I'm going to do a little bit of work on the bowl and then we put a coat of shellac on for you to see. So hopefully you'll be able to, to see and it'll really bring out that, that contrast in the wood. Great fun to have a go at. Something different and a good way of using wood that, that is slightly too thin uh, to sort of produce a a full, what would what would be a, a full thickness, a normal thickness, love spoon. Here he comes. I've got to ask, have they all made it into the workshop without any disappearing? I, I've been told I cannot eat them. There we are. Okay, now if you notice, there's quite a contrast in, in those Welsh cakes. Right. Right. And the reason is because different people are fussy, you see, about their Welsh cakes. Look, this is, look, we've now got a scene. This is like a, this is turned into the ultimate... Well seen. Oh, there we are. Go on, find us a dragon and a leek, and we're. This is the. Shall I call your mother? <laughs> <laughs> I do, hang on. We do, we, we, yeah, they want a dragon. We 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 we're, we're going to be. Uh, we're going to be. What what are they going to do? They're going to. They'll disconnect us or something. Now. Oh, probably. <laughs> But there we are, look, there's the Welsh cakes. Now, now, now the, this one here is, is a plain Welsh cake. Oh, that's because my son, he doesn't like sultanas. He doesn't like the sultanas in, you see. And some people then like them a little bit thin, 
and not bake too much. Right. And then other people like them quite thick and well baked. So there they are, a, a lovely variety. Another one as well, here we are. Get this in the comment section. Um, another one is um, nutmeg. Is it nutmeg? Yeah. Oh, no, no, there we are. Do you put nutmeg in Welsh cakes or not? There we are, the, the Welsh contingent. I mean, everyone, get it in. Do you do it or not? Doesn't matter if you make Welsh cakes. This is midnight joke, quite a dark looking out. Ah, what it is. You missed that, but it's, it's, uh, it's the, uh, the yoke is the bottom piece of wood. We've, we've mixed together, you missed that bit of the story. It's, um, it's two pieces of wood, a bit of mahogany and a bit of, uh, bit of oak. It's our combo. We're calling this our contrast. A new range of spoons, the contrast range. Now we're doing it for our collector's corner. And that's what we're doing is the contrast. Yeah, let us know, let us know in the comments section. If you make Welsh cakes, do you put nutmeg in them or not? We don't. But, and some people, yeah, there we are. Saying about that, a dollop of jam on them as oh, well. Oh, yes, yes. What about butter? They use butter on well, them? Well, I know me, I don't like well, butter. So no, Dad, does, no Dad doesn't like butter, but no. I know, I have seen people no. putting butter on them. So, uh, here we are, next, next, this is going to turn in. Oh, hang on. He's, he's, car, turn, no. he's turned up with more with more Welsh themed stuff. This is turning into a cookery demonstration, now. Huh? <laughs> Here we are. You'll have to go on. Fit fit that in. Try oh, and where fit do it. I put that now? You'll have to try and fit no, it. No, it would have gone on top, wouldn't it? I was just trying to. I don't know whether they're going to be able to see it. Here we go. There you go. Oh, that's Welsh. That's Welsh cowl. That is. So let's see if that comes up all right. Let's see if everybody can see it all right. So what we got in there, we got, I can see there's a bay leaf in there, there's leeks, there's carrots, there's a, uh, some celery, potatoes. What do we got, ham or lamb? There we go, ham or lamb. So that's, that's dinner for tonight. So cowl and Welsh cakes. I'll take it away so we don't can, go and drop can, it. Can we show a better view of that though, Dave? Is it, yeah, we, 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 we moved you, it in. You yeah, got we, one. we did. Okay. We yeah. should get that. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's cowl, of course. That's what it's called. C A W L. C A W. That's it. Yeah. And, so, and uh, there's, and there's, diff there's different ones. You have lamb, which is the traditional one, but some people put ham. Yeah. So, you know, it is... It's There's no rules or regs. I've heard of people using other things as well for... Yeah. And, you, you know, I've heard of people doing them just a vegetarian with no meat at all. But, yeah, there we go. Some different, some different things. For the second half of the live stream, we'll have to demonstrate how to, how to make cow. But a nice, a nice traditional recipe for St. David's Day. There we go. So you'll see there's the contrast again coming through at the top of the petals. This has taken a little bit longer to do uh, than if I was just doing this design in one spoon because I'm having to go a little bit deeper just to bring out that contrasting colour. I'm going to check if there's any thoughts. There we are. <laughs> Tommy says we can keep the stew but he'll have the Welsh cakes. No problem. There we go. Yeah, it's, I, I think, it's a traditional, traditional Welsh fare. Yeah, once you taste it, yes. Oh, it's, it's uh, a, well, the, the, the cowl, so you prepare it as well with, um, you, you serve it with bread and cheese. Yeah. So that's the traditional way to have it, is with bread and cheese. There we go. A little bit of wood just sharpening. to come out of there. I was asking now when it was started, so probably yesterday. You want to start your cowl a, a day before. Yeah. Typical mining. Mum started making the cowl yesterday. Yesterday, so it, yesterday it's yeah. Made yesterday, so it, it's better. Well, with than... stews and things like that, that's what you find, isn't yeah, it? Is it's that better the, the... They, 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 the flavour improves, you know, on the second day. Similarly, I, I always make a, if I'm making a curry, I make it the day before. Yeah. There we go. This has got, uh, this has turned into the, 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 the cookery demo now. Yeah. So we just, uh, Thomas the Woodcarver is most famous when it comes to culinary. Um, other than making spoons, his, his most famous dish is his onion soup, isn't it? That's your... Oh, it's uh, much sought after. Legendary, legendary. Yeah. Legendary stuff. So there we are, we've just got a little bit more of that oak just coming through on the inside there 
I also see as well, worth worth noting, we, we've, we've sort of gone on different pages, um, you know, beginners wood carving pages, just to see what people are talking about and to try and help out and also to share some thoughts and listen to what people are saying. Um, a lot of people are saying about how difficult oak is. Yeah, and it's not really... I can't always understand some of it. Have you read some of these, Dave? What's that? Uh, I've got cow warming in the pot now. Brilliant. Fantastic. I had, is, is that Don? Oh, he's, he, Don Harrison. Ah, oh, nice to have you with us. Ah, yeah, he's always... Happy St. David's Day. And as you guys ain't no plan, my wife's family are from Risca. Yeah. And I have family from Cardiff. Nutmeg, no butter, yes. There we go, see? John Harrison loved the two-tone wood. Thank you, Don. A midnight joker, two weeks to St. Patrick's Day. Better start digging my potato trenches. So St. Patrick's. Marek E.T. I always associate a Guinness. I was just saying to you, Marek E.T., food and work do not go hand in hand. Well, I'm not sure about that. It uh, depends if you're a chef. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose at the moment they don't. All the chefs, they're not allowed to... Well, no, they're still, they're still functioning. I suppose, yeah. Take away food. Or if, I mean, a bloke up the road, he, he sells fish, doesn't he? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And some people make, make the spoons and things for, for using, so... There we go. And we sold, we sold Welsh cakes. Yeah. There we go. Depends, depends the work, I think we'll, we'll say on that one there. There we are. I reckon we're getting towards where we want to get to with this one. I still want a little bit of that wood to come through. Yeah, we've we got well ready for the shellac on that. Yeah, I think so. There we go. We've got it that side. A little bit of... Um, Another thing here, you see, you could bring together, you know, yeah. two, two people. You, you, could, you could find, you know, if it was the... <coughs> Two people, depending on what part they come from. You, yeah. You could use. Oh, there's um, loads you can bring into this. Sorry. There's loads of you know yeah, you can yeah. you can give, as we always do. You can give your work extra meaning and more more of a story, you know, using using a method and a technique like this. What it is, just to explain what I'm doing now, I've just got a little bit of extra wood. Here. I just want to balance that up with the other side. So I could just see there was more wood on this side than on the other side. So I just wanted to balance it up. We'll sand it afterwards as well, but it just balances it a little bit. And to finish off, I'm going to carve just a little bit of the roughness out of the bowl before we go and add a, a couple of coats of shellac. So we just take a little bit out. Do you want to start shellacking the daffodil for every the maybe the hearts for everyone to see just while I'm doing that? Or yeah, okay. So if, Dad, if I finish this one off and Dad can start shellacking it, I'll tell you what I do. Before you start, I will I quickly do the other side of the bowl. That's what we do. There we go. It's just to smooth it off a little bit. Of course, the method that we use, we take the bulk of the bowl out using a router and a template. Just like so. There we go, and then... These will do we have us. Yes, and yourself. And yourself. Thank you for joining us. Great to have everyone with us again. There we are. We've just taken just that little bit off, just like so. And we're going to put a coat of shellac on there. And hopefully, I'll have two minutes... I'll have my drink and Dad will put a bit of shellac on there for you all to see. Where, where can I shellac it? Just as you, you, as you got it, it there. I, is I it? would so everyone can see it. You want it, you want it shellac in that particular style, do you? Thanks, Don. Thank you all. Can you tell me what you've used to bond it? Yeah, we've used um, we've used a wood glue on this one. I have done it with uh, super glue, asking about how we've stuck it together. Yeah. So yeah, we've used a wood glue and then something um, like um a uni bond, that type of thing. Yeah. You yeah. know. Make sure you sand the two pieces of wood nice and flat. 
have a look afterwards as well when you cut it just to see if there's any areas where it has pulled apart that's the difficulty is getting a good bond and what we've done as well we put it between the vise to clamp the two pieces together uh, I've done it as well with super glue but as Tommy I think it was was pointed out it's smaller pieces are okay with super glue but if you're using bigger bits you know it can become a bit it can become a bit brittle that sort of thing but there we are it's a different it's just a different approach and just doing something different with the love spoon because we, we're making them on a daily basis and we're always looking for something original um, and something that we haven't done before. Yeah. But watch this space. It'll probably be uh, something that you'll see a few others doing, but you saw it you saw it here first. Yeah, and it also it blows apart the the you know, some people say, Oh, you have to make a love spoon from one piece of wood. Yeah. Well it just it there's, there That's aren't any difference. rules or regulations, and it just yeah, it right. just proves it, you know. And what I will do, uh, I will very quickly just bring. I'll do a little bit of work on this for everyone to see, because that one there that actually took a little bit longer than I was expecting, but it's because it was slightly thicker. Now this one here shows you the different style that we use. So we've stuck we've stuck our design onto the wood. So we've got that stuck on the wood itself. And this, of course, the Celtic weave, the Celtic twist, Wales being a, a Celtic nation. Interesting thing then, um, you, the love spoon, in terms of the traditional symbols, Celtic symbols are a more modern thing. Uh, but it's interesting because a lot of people are becoming more familiar then with what, what are referred to as Celtic love spoons. But it's something, because Wales is a Celtic nation, it's a bit of a what we can break, call it a fusion. Doing that one. Yeah, there we are. Okay, because I'll have a little break and Dad, just, Dad can do, do some it, carving. Just to show you, I do it a different style. Anybody that um, there you go. Interested in so a, you'll see now a different, different carving style. style. Wash your your foot on that. Just that one. On there, there is it? Yeah. Okay. So you go on there. This, and this there. will give you an idea now of um, Hank Midnight Joker. Everyone, yeah, that's. Been a popular idea. Give it a give it a go, everyone. See how you get on with it. This now gives you an idea straight away how I do it differently to Dad, or Dad does it differently to me. So he's using then the mallet. So as as I will sort of just use a less sort of. It's um, hard for these young people to see that. Uh, a bit of brute force. We yeah. Call it brute force. You haven't mentioned what timber we're using either, Dave. We got one there. When are you going to do the carbon fonts video? So, for instance, um, I don't notice know. I, we've got a piece of wood. It's very important when I'm so using a look. mallet and chisel, Dave, that we have a piece of wood underneath. I yeah. mean, it's, it's important, even if doing it your style. Request there. Um, when are we going to do it? Is that going to. Are you going to sing? Don wants to know you're going to sing. Oh, of course. Well, yeah. we, we, need a, we need a song, don't we? I mean, uh, what are you it, singing it would have been... Uh, or well, would have been something like... We've got like... a request there as well about the fonts. Um, yeah, I, I'll grab a piece of wood and I'll demonstrate how we do, because we do like a standard script. You'll find it as well on, on, on the YouTube channel, but I'll just get a piece of wood and I'll demonstrate how we do the, the letters. Basically, when it comes to doing letters and the font, uh, we, we do that in sort of accordance with the space that we got on the love spoon and then the, um, the size of the chisel, the size of the gouge. So I will grab a, a, a piece of wood and demonstrate. Have you mentioned what wood we're using in this one? Uh, no, I haven't mentioned that. No. It's a piece of walnut. Recycled walnut. There we are, Dave. Where you gone? He's disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> I start to sing, he disappeared. <laughs> asking about the fonts, how we do the different letters. I can show how we do the fonts. Um, 
have we got a suitable piece of wood? That's, that's not great for when I just picked that up. Any Tom Jones song will do. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. What have we got? Have you got a decent piece of wood there for doing that? If I carry on with that. You carry on with this and I'll yeah. look for the, what we the do, piece Dan, of wood. I carry on with that then. Carve it and, and Dad will find you a piece of wood and then we'll demonstrate the letters again. We've got a specific video on it, but um, we will demonstrate it again for, for you all to see. Just a simple bit of mahogany or something like that. Yeah, something suitable. So again, this one we marked out with a vertical grain and um, we basically using, as you said, a piece of reclaimed walnut, nice timber to work in, and it's to create that sort of effect of the twist where you're going over and under and over and under, that sort of, that sort of effect, basically. So we're just using those stop cuts just to cut into. It's just slipping in the vise a little bit at the moment. So we tighten it back up a bit. Got to be careful not to over tighten it. So we're just using that stop cut just to cut into. And it will create that idea, that impression of it, of it going over and under. No, I'm not sure where that's happened. There's it's a piece of wood under there. Would that be suitable for it? Yeah, it's a better, I got better pieces here when I can find them. Um, here we are. See, this is this is this is what you call organisation. He's found them. So what I will do, just demonstrate a little bit on that side, like so. Turn it round for you to see, and I shall demonstrate our standard style of lettering. You got a piece there, dude? Yeah, got it, yeah, no. Fantastic. That one there, when we're doing those, we're going slightly across the grain. We're not going to worry about that too much. Turn it round in the vise. And there we go. You start to see how it's creating that effect of a twist. There's two lovely pieces there. There's Brilliant. that one there, look. It's got a few marks on it, um, which will have to be sanded out. And this is also a good example of how what happens to timber when it's when it's dried out look you can see exactly now that's if, a bit of cherry yeah if you show the edge though dave yeah you can you can show just it started to it's other side, a, it's other start, side round start there, to, start to see, warp a little the bit rings are green green and of course rings going that always, way starting to warp the opposite I, way which is always the case yeah so years ago if you were putting skirting board on skirting board was always well, this is an interesting thing. We had a lot of skirting board brought into us uh, in, in more recent years, and, and Dad looked at it and straight away he said, "Well, this all be marked out the wrong way round." Yeah. Well, it is. It's, some is marked right and some is marked wrong. But that's right because they just pick it up and just mark it as they're going well, along. They just push it through the. To just um, push it through the machine, but motor. but when you were learning, wasn't it? You yeah. you would check it and you'd always mark it. With the with the rings going yeah. the opposite way That's to the right. wall, so it would pull against the wall. So 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 that would be the wall side, like so. It would pull against the wall. Right. Let's demonstrate then how we do the font. As I said, there's a, a dedicated video for this one on the channel. But to go over it again, we start off. Then we start off with A. So we're using. We basically adapt the letters and adapt what we're doing to um, fit our gouges and to also then sometimes to fit our love spoon. So you do a capital A, that's the two side lines like so, one and two. And this is great then for uh, personalizing. So when we make spoons, we, uh, when we sort of, when we do the spoons for people, for occasions and things like that. Sometimes if it's a bespoke spoon, we carve, um, we, we actually cut out on a scroll saw the letters. If it's, if it is a standard spoon like this, I would carve one initial in each heart. So you've got the A, we then go on to our B, just like so. If anybody else as well, whenever you request us to do something, if we forget, just, just let us know because we, 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 we are more than happy to, to demonstrate the processes and the methods that we use. So 
give us a reminder, the same as in this example. So you've got then, you've got our A, B. So the B is done with two, two curves, two, two sort of curved sections, a larger one for the bottom and a smaller one for the top. And what you find is that certain letters have um, similarities. So a C, for instance, a G we develop from our C. So the C, I tend to do top and bottom, just like so. One like that, and one like that. And then we do the back. There we go. And we've marked this, all of these are being put on the wood using um, the, you can see the grain is running in that direction. Just conscious that my seat is quite close to there. So that's our C, where we got D. So we do the back. What does this cloth do? Is this anything? I think Yelly's brought it for us to use. Oh. We do the back, the top, the bottom. And then the front. And that's what I would sort of say, if anybody, you know, obviously asking this question, you're looking to do some engraving and things like that, because we also do the lowercase letters. And if you're looking to do, um, yeah, if you're looking to do the letters like this, you need to find a system that works for the tools that you've got and for your own carving style. So that's the back. We've then got top and bottom. I tend to do the bottom one first and then match the top up to it. So we've got one and two. It's a good little project as well, this one, for anybody who's learning wood carving. Good project to do. Do you think that would be worth seeing if I show these? Yeah, we can do. Right. Yeah, we, we'll demonstrate. We'll show some of the other styles as well that we've done uh, before we finish. So we've got the, we're up to E. Then we got F, similar to, the way we do an F is similar to how we do an E. So we got the back and then across the top, like so. And it's basically finding, it's basically finding simple processes for how you can, how you can go. Good thing with this as well. Guess, it gets my brain thinking, what comes after F? <laughs> G. So as I said, the G, and I'm doing it, it's amazing how when we're, we're doing things like this, we say we do it one way and then you go and demonstrate doing it differently because the C, I did it top and bottom, but the G now I'm gonna do it slightly wider and I actually did the back first of all. So do the back, the top, the bottom, just little piece like so. And what you notice as well, I'm basically doing stop cuts. So we do, we do the stop cuts and then afterwards, we just go back over the stop cut, just to bring it out, just to give it a little bit of extra depth and detail. So before lockdown, so this time uh, last year, we would be doing this for coach groups and we would have a group come in, just looking to the right couch, yeah. We'd have a coach group come in and we would be um, you know, you, you never know we may, if we sold a few spoons, we would do this for people to see. We would demonstrate it and put them on the spoons for them whilst they were waiting. The good thing with carving them on as well, if you do things like pyrography over time, it can fade a little bit. But with this one, once you put it on there, if it fades, you just put a bit of oil on it and it will bring it back out again. So we're up to H, I like so, so we do the, the center, the bottom and the top. What I would advise is just finding a method, an approach that suits yourself. Always remember when I used to do the next letter, we're on to J, I used to end up carving the J because it's, it's slightly different to carving it to, than writing it and I used to always want to carve the, the J backwards. So H I J. There we go. You've got two. The two different styles of lettering there. Yeah, Dad's just preparing a few for us to see. Because quite a lettering. Wow. 
you can do all sorts of different styles. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, that's a... Um, I mean, today, of course, a lot of... Um, you know, we, we get, occasionally we get requests to carve some Monograms and, on and a, palace on a script. bench or something like that. Yeah. And we, we've done all sorts over the years. I mean, in some of the local churches, there's some yeah. of Dad's, um, some of the carvings that he's done. And there, there's so many different styles. Uh, that, that quite often can be difficult because what you're actually matching to is, is an engraving machine. That's what people don't yeah. realise is yeah. that they, they ask us, they think the incumbent board has been done by hand, and it hasn't. It's been done by an engraving machine. So what we do is to take um, take examples from the what the engraving machine has already done and, and copy them. It's quite difficult then because your levels and things they've got to be absolutely perfect. So any 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 thoughts, any feedback on the, the lettering? Because no, no, somebody no, was requesting no. it there. Do, do you want to check who was requesting it so I can speak? Um... Who's requesting the lettering? Uh... Daz is checking it now. So it's. This is the style that I would mainly use, but that's what we're saying is that there are lots of other styles as well. It would have been one of the most, uh, the, the last comments to come in. L, we're on to M. So the M we do with two sides. And then oh. two on the top. And no plan. Ain't no plan. When, when you go, yeah, ain't no plan, is it? That's right. Yeah. When you're gonna do that carving from video you promised me. So here we are. This is the carving fonts. Uh, That's how we do it. I think it's Clinton Sicora. Yeah. Um, have you both ever tried using Makata for making love spoons? Apparently it's as carvable as wood. No, uh, no, no. No, the answer is no. No, only ever, we've only ever used the, the no. wood. I, I requested. Yeah, that's why we got you and, and no plan. Ain't no plan. Ain't no plan. So yeah, here we go. So this is the simple style that we use for, for doing it. We'll also show you a few other styles then that we've used, um, including what we do on bespoke spoons. So if we've got a couple of the yeah. Of the different spoons, just so to see different styles. But this would be the main one on on our love spoons in terms of hand carving. Element O. We get in there. I think we're over halfway. And it's we've got a really nice. I'll show you our gouge as well. Once I finish this one. Um, if, if I just push that one in a second, though, Dave. Yeah. Okay. Dad wants show, to show. Yeah, that show. one there, for instance, for a font that was done back as the date says, eighteen forty three not done by ourselves but that has been sort of etched on i would call that isn't it well yeah no it's it's got i mean look at the carving it's like, um, the rest of the carving is, is beautiful 1843 yeah you know and, and but but it's the simple style it was obviously relevant to these people yeah uh, but it's very simply carved and, and with the love spoon you know the style that we use is is quite sort of fitting to what the what it would have been done years ago. Well, this, I've been I've been very interested in um, a lot of you know what's going on in the different groups, carving groups, and things like that. And there's there's one thing that strikes me with a lot of what's going on with wood carving, and that's where uh, a lot of the simple things. There's I, I find that a lot of people, and especially beginners, are wanting to do very complex carvings as opposed to doing simple things well. Um, you know, that's sort of how I learned then it was where dad had me doing simple things um, as opposed to doing more complex things. Because of course, doing more complex things, the more complex it gets, the more difficult to, is, to do. The love spoon is a simple thing. It's the thought that counts with Absolutely. the love spoon. We always emphasize that. But that's and that is something then we're gonna we're gonna look at in in upcoming videos, 
is is some of the more simple some simple ideas then for people because I think there's there's a there's a beauty in simplicity sometimes isn't there yeah. we're up to the so, R we get asked as well which are the more difficult letters to do there, there, there's none there's not sort of one letter or a particular one that is more more well, difficult the most difficult ones are the ones we get wrong dear. that's right we've always over the years see we've changed what we do before I started in the workshop dad had a policy where he didn't used to write down how uh, he, he wouldn't write down the the name and uh, we used to have an egg cup in the in the house with the name soppy written on it didn't we yeah and that's that was one thing that i uh, the most useful thing probably i introduced was to write the name down so you don't uh, you don't get it wrong so we're up to s oh ain't no plan yeah uh he's saying do you nick wood or gouge when carving fonts but it does it can happen it does happen yeah occasionally especially now that's 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 that is a go, good point go that's a good point grain. right now I, I tell you what happens yes when you're working with oak and what happens it's those spring summer growth lines and the worst one for doing it is ash that is the worst yeah. for doing it um what will happen it'll just shift and especially if your gouges are due for a sh if they're due for a sharpen yeah. then that is one of the worst occasions when it when it will happen that because of the nature of the spring summer growth the the wood will just shift across and yet yeah, you'll you'll just it, it'll it often, it'll it'll sort of bruise the wood it often used to happen when you're a coach people you've got 50 people here and they you've got a queue waiting for spoons <coughs> and the first one you do yeah you have a problem with it yeah. what i tend to do you can't sort of completely get rid of it once once this happened but what i would do I, i'll show you on here what i try to do to cover it so yeah it does happen but i will demonstrate what we would do um you know to, to it doesn't completely eliminate it but it just covers it to a degree and some people actually prefer it so i'll demonstrate at the end of this how, uh, how we do it so we're on to the u so the u you've got the two side pieces there we go we put the bottom on there as well anybody else as well any requests for things to demonstrate let us let us know because it's it's good fun keeps us going keeps us busy and it's it's nice to be able to share different ideas for you to see you and then on to the i don't think i missed a letter yet and then the w we do the two sides first i'll mirror the the m above it to a degree there we go where have we got the mr gouge Just like so. So we do the two, the two sides, and then the two middle pieces. And then X, we just crisscross it over. So one going the one way. It's almost like the, uh, what do they call it? The X box type symbol for the X that we use. And every time you can see we do the stop cut and then we just take a little bit of extra detail out a y we're nearly there just like so if you can hear a noise in the background as well this is thomas the woodcarver is frantically polishing tidying up a, a spoon the z then i tend to do the top the bottom First of all, one, two, take a little bit out and then join the two lines together. So yeah, that is the main method that we use for doing the fonts. Do you want to just whiz across there with, is this, is this shellac here? Is that the shellac brush? That's the shellac, yeah. Yeah, right, all I do, just so you can see it a bit more clearly, once we put some shellac on there, when we're doing this, in terms of having groups in 
quite often we would just put some oil because it contrasts the shellac where you've cut through it just to bring it up quickly. There's a couple of woods though that do have a problem if you do that. Ramin is one. If you work in ramen at all, the ramen is it, it it'll go all blotchy. And then certain times it, it can happen, in, it, it soaks into the pores of the wood and it makes it go all blotchy. So if you're in doubt about a piece of wood, re shellac it as opposed to um yeah. So that's a simple method, but all you would do is adapt that method to fit your gouges. Now this one here, this is perfect if you're doing um lowercase words so give me a give me a give me a word uh, I, I tell you what we do yeah so if i was doing in in lowercase let's say we were going to do as is st david's day we'll do a nice a nice welsh welsh word we'll do kutch so again if we're doing lowercase i would use this gouge um let Britain's us know in the... Sorry, chaps, have to go. Thanks for the great presentation. No, and thanks for joining us. Intro to Cow. <laughs> Thank you for joining and us. I just didn't know the name. Uh, I'll catch you both next lesson. Brilliant. Yes. No, thanks again. <laughs> there we are. So, I'm just thinking, and this is what happens. I've got to think now, which way does the tea go? This is what happens, because when you're, when you're carving it, you th you're... You don't, it's not the same. It's a kicking tee. Yeah, but is it kicking to the left or the right? <laughs> um, so what it is, as I'm carving it, I don't, I think slightly differently to how I write. So if I was doing lowercase, there we are. You can see that would be the, the approach that I would take is to do all of the stop cuts like so. Again, you would come around the outside and just do a little bit of extra work. So it just shows you how you adapt your method and your style to suit the gouge that you're working with. This one here, if you're looking for gouges, I can't believe it, as I said, on these different forums, people were talking about getting gouges in the UK. And these, this is made by Sorby and they make brilliant gouges. And I couldn't believe that nobody was mentioning that Sorby still make gouges here in the UK. Um, talking about all these different imported ones when Sorby make really good gouges here in the UK so do Ashley Isles and Henry Taylor's are decent as well so yeah worth worth checking those out if you're looking for tools for, for wood carving because those ones they're, they're making them here in the UK so you shouldn't have any problems getting hold of them let's have a little look there we are just a little tail on the T as well and I'm looking at it and thinking I have done it the right way right so again, a little bit of oil or shellac, just to bring it out. Just, oh, that's, that's clever, isn't it? And again, I was demonstrating incorrectly just now because I was, wasn't was using, wasn't, wasn't shellacking with the grain, but that's just a bit of rushing. Much as you can, try and apply it with the grain. Now on the one little patch, I haven't put any shellac on. I'm just gonna demonstrate what you can do if you uh, almost, What's the word if you damage the edge slightly? If the, yeah, if the chisel just goes with the grain, yeah. the flow of the grain. Um, so I'll, I'll demonstrate it with an S. So I'll do an S for you to see. One, two, I'm hoping that that is still, yeah, yeah we're still just about on the camera there. So let's have a little look. So that's the bottom of the S and then Around the top, just like so. So where are we gonna where are we gonna damage it? Well, in, again, because it's mahogany. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 the sort of it's perfect for us mahogany because it's it dense, quite a dense grain, and it really it chips. really does it. Yeah. But let's say, for instance, um, the bottom part of that S there. See? Let's say, for instance, you lose on the line. There. You lose there. Okay. We chipped out of there. So all all I would basically do, we would we would work around, just like so. And as I said, very difficult to completely get rid of it. But I would I would match it up. And if you're doing a project for somebody and, and something like this happens, you basically go deeper as well. Yeah. If you then turn it into almost a feature. I hope you can still see that clearly there as I turn it around. Turn it into 
make it appear as best you can that no no mistake, no issue has happened, and use it in in the actual finish. So I've gone right the way around all of it. I then go back over my stop cuts. So that as much as you can, you create the effect. You create the, I want to say the word I want to use is the, the illusion. The illusion yeah. You create the illusion that you've meant to do it when you haven't. So the person, when they receive that and look, look at it, maybe, you know, the odd person, if they're very, very discerning, may think, oh, something went wrong there. But not many really would. And you as the as the maker, you're the one who's creating it. And if you know what's happened, I would say 99 times out of, well, 999,999 out of a million, nobody would say or yeah. think anything. One of the things with, um, if, it, if it's with a carving, one of the things that we do, if, if we've got a difficult bit to do on any yeah. carving, do it first. Do that difficult bit first. Yeah. So organisation comes into this. If you yeah. organise your carving in a way and, that you get and the that. other thing, Dave, about the chipping. Yeah. If it's a bad one, then we start again. Yeah. It just we, depends on the nature you know, of it. But I, I'm sort of looking here at, at flaking, where yeah. it flakes around yeah. the edge, because I've gone back over it. So, for instance, that was damaged there. By the time I I'd have finished with this. Yeah. Nine, as I said, 999,999 out of a million would not know that there was any issue here. It would be one in a million that somebody would say, ah, oh, probably the yeah. people who've just watched me demonstrate yeah. it would say, right, yeah, I know what's happened there. Yeah. So all I've done, I've gone back over where that issue was. I'm now going to sand it again, okay? So we've just rounded it all off. We okay. put a little bit of shellac. Not too much this time. Yeah, a little bit of shellac in there. Just like so. And put it all over just to use a bit up. But also again, you know, we're, this isn't the um, national health. We're not dealing with... Yeah, a, that's a, right, it's a piece of wood. Or something. It's a piece right. of wood that we have in. So we but can, the, in, we the interesting, again if it goes wrong. The interesting thing, um, you know, there, as I said, that's that's a mistake in many ways, but I like that S better than the other one. And this is what happens. Yeah. So that S, I actually prefer that one, the way that's finished, despite the fact that I damaged the edge deliberately for you all to see how you can cover it up. But that's what you can do. So it's adapting to whatever goes wrong. And then it's using the font then that we use, two different examples, one lower one uppercase it's using your gouges use your tools excuse me to create the shape and create the form and what you can do if you're struggling with this actually get your gouge and draw the inside line draw the inside impression of that on the piece of paper and see what shapes you can build up and, and put them together with different gouges to actually form letters. Yeah. Practice it, have a go, and go from there. Lettering. Finish off, Thomas Woodcarver's going to show us a few other styles of font well, you, that we've you used. You put them where you want them, Dave, and yeah. because you can see where the letter... Just, just to give an example of... No problem. Right, this one here, that was one, as you can see, done back in 1973. So what, what, what Dad has basically it's, it's done Roman. here... It's more Roman. It's, it's more of a Roman style of, of lettering, yeah. font, but... It's been cut down into the woods. Yeah. So I mean, the same, the same the as that one there. Was. Demonstrate, yeah, that one there. Did you bring any of the bespoke but, spoons? Yeah, I'm going to get one off. But Here the we opposite, are. The opposite there way you go. Looks, is that one there. The yeah. opposite way, where you the same style of writing. You demonstrate that one. You explain that one on that one. I'm going to get a few bespoke spoons. Oh, you're he's, he's taking a chance leaving me here now. Same, I'm hoping you could get that in there. Same style of writing this time, but instead of carving the initial out, what I've done is taking the background down and, then and we're raising yeah. the letters and numbers. So yeah, it's, it's reverse. So a different style of carving again. There we are. 
And the okay. last couple that I'll show you. Um, here we are. Now this is using the scroll saw. Uh, and I, I, we use the scroll saw, as you know, we use it a lot. I'm combining the scroll saw with the, with the hand carving. And this is the sort of thing then that you can create. You, you, you basically carve the down into it, but you get all of this contrast when it's on the wall because you've got the light in between. So that's another way that we do it. Remember as well, if you are looking for different fonts, the other thing you can do is to do a Google search and you can get fonts off the, off the internet and then trace it onto the wood itself and use those guidelines. So it's those basic principles of carving to use it in that way. If you show Another way. as well, Liv, you've got... Here we are. Again, you've got 72. You've got... I think there's so that is three where... different styles of carving. Yeah, do you want to you explain know, the three? You, yeah, you've got... Um, I was experimenting with the carving. So for anybody, um, you know, at the stage, sort of still learning how to cut... Well, we're, still, we're all still learning. But, you know, I, I've carved it in a little bit deeper there. Um, we've actually carved the initials right out on that one. And then it's just carved in slightly on that one. And on the other side then, experimenting, taking the initial right away and just carving it slightly on that one. So it's a question of experimenting and deciding what sort of initials you like and what's appropriate for any one particular job, really. That's it. There we are. Hopefully, hopefully I'll give you some ideas. If you want us to do any follow-up on that, have you got, got any questions about all of that, get them in to us, let us know, put them in the comment section, and we, we, we'll help you out. It's no problem at all. I, I would say that with, the, with carving initials, Adir, yeah. one of the factors is time. It is. The things that I've shown yeah. them on that spinning chair and that... They, it, Take a lot more, more time. You know, when, when it's commercial. Yeah. You... So this style, the reason we develop this style and the reason we use this is, I mean, we, for instance, we used to have groups where they'd be on their way to the, the ferry in, in Ireland. So they, they're, they're under the constraint of time. So we've got to be able to carve quickly. And so that is, that's why we use that style. But there we are. Hopefully that's useful. Thank you for joining us. Uh, there's been many, many... Many thanks. No, you're welcome. Thank you for reminding me because we we literally we just we just for, for, forget these things. So any any follow up, if you have any problems with us, uh, with, with, if you have any problems with that, let us know, and we're more than more than happy to help. But thank you all for joining us. Hope you enjoy the rest of your St David's Day, and as always, we'll be back again soon with more videos. But thank you again for joining.